and now a Mexico moment with me. Happy Friday, fuckers. It's another Mexico moment with Nate and Alexis. I'm Nate, and this is my wife, Alexis. Hey, guys. How's it going? And this is episode number five. Uh, Nice. (laughs) How you doing, Lex? I'm doing great. How are you, Nate? (laughs) Good. We just had to um, pause for a second because there was a guy... um, not, I don't know what he was doing, not actually. Sure. I was, we're sitting in our apartment, and then we hear this like this Mexican music just blasting out loud. Lovely Mexican music, but just where is it coming from? Yeah, so we look outside, and it's just a guy on a cart. And sometimes there's dudes on carts that will uh, that come with water. Sometimes they sharpen your knives. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they have food. Yeah, sometimes they're selling food. Laundry delivery. Yeah, laundry. Yeah, Everything's there's, delivered. There's lots of guys. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you just have to, they will either yell for you from the street yep. or uh, play some music really loud. I guess so. A little <laughs> so, honk will be okay. Yeah, I'm still curious um, what he's selling or what he's doing. But I'm asking some neighbors to get well, the 411. We may never know. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, so we had a pretty uh, eventful last week. Uh, Alexis's brother was in town for his yeah. birthday with his girlfriend Pebbles. Yep. So good to see my brother Eric. And I had previously met his girlfriend Pebbles in... Florida you haven't yet but she was great we you know they did everything we kind of wanted them to or everything they wanted to actually yeah they gave us a list of things they wanted to get done so we kind of planned a little itinerary around that um so Eric has never been and for those of you that listen to the radio show this is her brother that had been shot four years ago uh yeah almost five i think yeah or five years ago now um but he's doing yeah. great he was in ohio at the time if you remember that story and and he lives in florida now yep. um, 29 not, years old yeah not far from Didn't alexis's you? mom and and uh dad and you know got you got the whole family down in florida now. yeah almost. the whole family's in florida <laughs> except for your other brother alex. yeah we need one more down we need alex down uh to florida but they're closer we're you know closer yeah to so eric got his first passport <laughs> Um, first time out of the country. First time out of the country. So excited. Yeah. I'm so excited for him. He came here and they had a list of things they wanted to do. Uh, day one, we did what? Uh, we did. Oh, the ruins. Yes. Ekbalam. Yeah. We did Ekbalam. They wanted to do some ruins. So we did those ones just because you can climb them. Yeah. Um, so we and... kind of went back and forth about a couple different ruins, but. We thought Ekbalam would be great because they can climb it, like you said. So yeah, so we did that. It's about it's about two hours. Yeah, out into the jungle. It's a good and little trek. Yeah, so we rented a car, uh, headed out that way, and we're on the highway, but it's like kind of the only thing out there in the Yucatan. Yeah, I mean it's just jungle and nothing. Renting a car was great. It gave us like you know flexibility. We could get there as fast as we wanted or you know take our time do yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> on the highway it's it's somewhat brand new i don't know if they just repaved it recently or widened it or whatever but there's a lot of construction going on it has been for at least the last year yes. that we've uh, been driving down it, it looks and, really nice yeah so really we nice. are get we're almost there it's about two hours away we were like there's one last exit that we have to get off it says we have to like kind of turn right and this is like this kind of clusterfuck of a mix master of two highways coming together oh, it was a mess. and we've <laughs> we've been on this highway before and we knew there was some construction here so we get up to this spot where there's supposed to be a turnaround and there's not a turnaround no it's like turn left yeah no, no so left. <laughs> we keep going a little bit or i don't know how the fuck to turn around here yep. so we go a little bit further and there's some kind of like a rest stop and it's in the middle of like in between the two lanes yeah like in the median yeah something. like they have them in florida kind of, off yeah. the turnpike yeah, so we we pull through there so we can turn back around and we're going back around and it's telling us, okay, now you got to go to the right and get off in this exit and it's going to loop back around and take you over to where we're going. Yeah. And we're about 10 minutes away at this point. We come up and I go, I don't think there's an exit. Here. No. It does not look like it was just construction. We're not seeing anything. <laughs> and we get up to uh, and so we pass it uh. and I'm like, okay, well, well, now we can find another place to turn around. Let's try this again. Yep. Two hours and 34 minutes is the next turnaround. Let the freaking out begin. (laughs) Or like, oh my God. And this is a a divided highway where they have like a cement median in the middle that's like, I don't know, like four feet tall or something. Yeah, brand new. Like there's no getting in between them. And fun fact, (laughs) we did this same exact thing last time we came, coming from a different direction with some uh, different people. We weren't driving, uh, but our friend Lisa was driving and she 
was getting off the exit. Same deal. It just kind of fucked us around. The and GPS is wrong, and then the signage doesn't make sense, and it's just, yeah. Yeah, so same thing happened. It says, like, over two hours to turn around. Uh, we're like, what the fuck do we do? Uh, so <laughs> we're just driving, and there's a lot of construction, and for maybe 15 minutes, there's nothing. Like, it's just that cement medium. I'm like, yeah. we're never going to be able to turn around. We're going to have to drive another two and a half fucking hours back. Yeah. I'm so mad. Gonna have to call and it, I mean, it was nobody's fault. I wasn't mad at anybody. I was just mad that at the situation. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. None of us could believe. We're like, no, there'll be another turnaround. And that was probably making you yeah. more. But we, well, yeah, because we had just <laughs> like, driven that road. And I'm like, there was no fucking turnaround. Yeah. There's construction the whole way. Yep, yep. Luckily, we finally got to a little spot where they had cones where they hadn't put the, yeah. the cement yet. And Thank so God. we turned around there. But could have been a catastrophe. It could have been so bad. It was perfect. It was it was meant for us, that little spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh so we did the the ruins. Um fantastic as usual. Yeah. Very yeah. few people there. If you're looking at going between Chichen Itza and Ekbalam, I would say Ekbalam unless you don't think you're ever going to come back to Mexico again. Yeah. Um, it's really impressive. You can climb it, you know. Yeah, there it's far less busy. There's a cenote right beside it. Yeah, cenote. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we did. So we yep. then we decided to go to cenote after we went to the ruins. And there was uh, a guy like renting bikes, I guess. And yeah. so we, oh no, actually he was the ticket taker the and bikes then were the bikes free. were free or yeah. you could drive your car. So we were like, Hey, let's ride the bike. So we're just yeah. riding our bikes through the fucking jungle and we finally very get bumpy. there. Yeah, very, very bumpy. bumpy. Road. Yeah. These bikes get... are free into the jungle. That's why the road's super bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're free. <laughs> so we, uh. We get out and we go to Cenote, and we've never been to this one before. I can't even remember what it was called. It was like Isha or something. I could never say it. You said it better. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But um, it was a great Cenote. Yeah, I mean, beautiful. It, some of them are caves. Some of them are open. Some are closed. This was like a big hole in the ground. Yeah. And you had to. T- we had to walk down this like little crookedy ladder to get down there. And but it uh, wasn't creepy. It was like still bright. It yeah. was big enough that, you know, there was light everywhere and the water was so beautiful. Some it rope, like, swings. rope swings. It was cool because they did. Some of the places are a little overcautious. They make you wear a life jacket or whatever. Yeah. So that kind of sucks jumping off a rope with that. But this one, they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. They you had did. them. They yeah. had them available. Yeah, they did. But and there were some to. kids screaming. Ugh. Take the baby. Like, parents, don't bring babies to cenotes yeah. if they don't want to swim. Yeah, this... if he's afraid of the water, don't throw him. Like, we're in the jungle trying to relax. It's very <sighs> quiet and peaceful. peaceful. It's like kind of a Mayan, like, yeah. ceremonial we're... area. And we're hearing just this. It's like a little squ- boy or yeah. something. He, terrified to be in the like, water. He doesn't want to go in the fucking water. We're like, please, Stop you're it. traumatizing <laughs> this child. He really did not want to be in the water. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but other than that, it was great. Beautiful. 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 Very Instagram worthy pictures. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. And then we did what the next day we did uh, Ishkaret, the, Ishkaret, the park. Our favorite. Yeah. The, the one that we could have got that discount on. It's, we just didn't know how okay. calendars we're not, work. We're just going <laughs> to press on with our annual passes and call it a, a day <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun i don't know if any did anything crazy happened there um they were my brother and his girlfriend were really impressed they they loved it but i don't think anything not too too crazy no yeah. no yeah. lizards jumping at us no nothing uh we saw lots of animals lots of good swimming yeah yeah that was yeah, pretty. Oh, uh, we had to take them back. So we took the bus there, which is like five bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. But to get back, there wasn't any buses running. So we had to take the Collectivos. And I can't remember if we've talked about this before, but the Collectivos are basically like little buses that run up and down the highway yeah. or in town. Um, instead of having like a large city bus, they're these little vans. They look like little white catering vans, kind of. Yeah. And they hold, I don't know, maybe like 15, 12, 12 10, 14 people. 10, 15, yeah. Yeah. And. Super cheap. They're like dollar fifty to go Very the same cheap. distance that like a thirty dollar cab would go, but the, you're sharing it. So you have to like flag them down on the interstate. Yeah. The worst part of doing this is when it's dark <laughs> out and you have to flag down like on a busy interstate trying to get a van to pull over in like record speed, like soon as they see you. So we're out there. It's and a we... little sketchy. <laughs> yeah. I looked at my brother and Pebbles. So I was like, "Trust me, we got this. We got to ride home." Just like. You know, trust Just us. be cool. They're like, what's <laughs> happening? So that was, you know, probably the first red flag for him. Yeah. So we get in the Collectivo. There's only, there's two seats maybe or one because it, it's a packed van. Yeah. Like, there's tons of people in there. And uh, he's like, get in. So all like, four of okay. us get in. I'm standing yep. in the van. And this is just like a passenger van. You got up in the front with some guy. Yeah, because 
another girl was in the passenger seat and he um the driver was like you up here i'm like oh great so i'm in the middle of the driver and some woman i don't know in kind of like a child seat like this is a terrible decision i'm like (laughs) staring out the dashboard like just looking back at you guys like i love you (laughs) it was fine and they 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 ended up having to sit on the floor in the back yeah and i (laughs) just remember standing there trying to hold myself up (laughs) like my hands above my head on the van. So I'm not falling over, running into people. And I look over and Alexis is in the front with some guy, bad bunnies playing on the radio. Eric and Pebbles are on the floor. And these two Mexican women are fanning them with their hand fans. Those girls were so much fun. They were telling the driver like what to play, all the different songs. And they're like jamming out. It was a very positive uh, collectivo. Yeah. (laughs) I hope they enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, My poor brother. (laughs) He's probably like, what did you bring me to Mexico to do? Then, and the next day, we oh, then we went to Cozumel. Yep, and we, we did the snorkel Cozumel, tour, snorkel. hung out with some friends. We did uh, Thanksgiving or not Thanksgiving? Oh what goodness. was it? Uh, Easter, Easter dinner? Yeah, did a Easter dinner over there. It was a and, great day. Yeah, oh yeah, really good day. The only thing that was weird there was when we went to the that kind of beach bar that we usually get the real cheap tortas at. Yeah, shh, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when we went there, you came up to me and you said, "Oh, that lady just yelled at you." Because Tiger got too close to her what? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yes. Yeah. You so what me? happened? Uh, some woman brought two chickens to the beach. I don't know why. We love the spot. They have really good food, really good. You know, the bartenders are awesome. It's a great view. You can snorkel. And... Sometimes, you know, people are laying by the water, sun tanning. There's a guy that comes and draws like paintings and uh, does different kinds of art. Like people will be eating and listening to music. This woman's laying there sun tanning with two chickens, like a roost, like a big white fluffy rooster. And then like a little brown kind of looking rooster thing. Yeah. Took them to the beach. I I didn't know they were hers. I thought they were just, you know, wild chickens on the island running around, something like that. Tiger, of course, I'm looking at him. He was going towards the chickens. I'm like, oh, how's this going to go? You know, because he doesn't know what a chicken is. <laughs> <laughs> going towards the chicken. And he doesn't even want the chickens. He's going for the palm tree. I can see, like, both of us. I think we both Oh, noticed. like he wanted to pee on the palm yeah, tree. Yeah, he had to pee. So he's like, get out of the way, chickens. I got to go. Chicken bucks at him and, like, flies like almost flies on top of him and tiger just runs the lady you know looked at me and i said hey your chicken just attacked my dog and she was like keep your dog away from my chicken or something like that i was like he attacked my pug (laughs) (laughs) bitch yeah (laughs) so it was traumatizing tiger was traumatized after that and i don't know who brings chickens to the beach they were pretty but they were aggressive yeah but other than that i think that was (laughs) was other than the chickens you know attacking our dog that's nothing it was a long day for sure i'm sure other things happened but that was yeah we we did the snorkeling tour which was great oh it was wonderful we had picked a like we got sunburnt because you're not allowed to wear uh sunscreen like 30 minutes after yeah before or after or something like that before we get um, on with the reef yeah protect the reef protect the reef guys um but yeah other than that it's been pretty eventful i mean eventful slash uneventful weekend a lot of good things happened very few bad we did a lot of things everything was positive and we checked hopefully we checked everything off their list i think we did yeah i think the last place we went before they left was captain sandwich yeah which is one of our favorite breakfast places (laughs) oh yeah sorry capitan sandwich capitan sandwich Sandwich. (laughs) uh and just a breakfast place and it's outside right on fifth ave so we just kind of people watch and sit and drink uh big delicious juices natural juices fifth and like ctm yeah uh (laughs) so we're sitting there i'm like looking at you guys because i'm facing the street and i'm talking to everybody at the table and i turn around (laughs) what do you see and I see a guy with a bucket on his head. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This dude has, and it's not, well, not so much a bucket. It's more like a waste bin or yeah, like a, like, office like a trash, trash can, can for an office, yeah. like a secretary one, like yeah. a little desk. No lid. No. Just the bin. And he's doing like these weird dance moves <laughs> and then he starts crawling. I think he freaks some guy out because he pulled the bucket back yeah. and then the dude caught eyes with him. And he started being weird. Then the other guy walks by, puts the bucket back on his head, and starts going, dong, 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 dong. <laughs> 
I think they knew him. Maybe not. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But um, so we did. There was a bucket head spotting in uh, in Playa del Carmen. Yes, bucket head. That was so funny. Oh. He had some sweet dance moves, but he was definitely on something. Yeah, like a lot. Yeah, and I think actually we went the we went to that beer bar later or the next day. Yeah. And our friend Josue, he said he saw him the night before and he yeah. showed us the video. Same pants. He took a video. Same yeah. pants. <laughs> same hat. Same, <laughs> same bucket. Hat, same guy. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about the pancake. Just kidding. Oh, yeah. That was good. Delicious pancake. Like a one to two inch thick pancake. Oh, it's so good. I've never. We have to go back and it get It was that. like if all three merged together. It was like one big stack. Yeah, it was so good. I think I got like 10 messages from girlfriends about that pancake. Yeah. Cap- Capitan sandwich. We're going to have to go so, back. Yes. Check it yeah. out. All right. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> that was, it was a great week. Great weekend. Looking forward to the next one. I don't know who's coming to visit next, but actually our friends from Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, your old co-worker, uh, Nate and Brianne. Yep. Nate and Brianne will be here. Before that, BFF is coming back. My oh, best, yeah. My bestie. That's uh, true. Chrissy yeah, is so coming back. So, so excited. I'm sure there'll be something else going on this weekend. I we'll know. There's always something. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. All right. Let's get to some listener questions. First one is from Alicia. Do you still feel like a tourist or do you feel like a local now? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say I definitely don't feel like a local. Yeah. But I don't feel like a tourist. Right. When I, we're above tourists now, I think. Yeah. We're almost going on two years. We've figured the things out, but we're definitely not locals. Yeah. I don't know if we could ever, would we truly be local? I don't know if we ever really truly could. I don't know. Maybe that's just in our own heads, but I yeah. I feel like it. I was actually tell, telling your brother about this. It's like this. I don't want to say like reversed stereotypes or whatever, but it's like no matter how well somebody from another country in the U.S., like somebody from Guatemala or something, no matter how perfect English they speak, yeah. somebody's still going to ask them where they're from. Yeah, yeah they're not sure. going to say they're not going to assume that they're from the U.S., which is what I think I would feel like here is even if I'm like fluent Spanish, know everybody, know everything about the area and the history and all this stuff, people are still going to look at me from across the way yeah. or fr- or not even knowing me and think, oh, well, you know, he's a tourist or whatever. It's hard to ever be like yeah. local, local. Well, I don't even feel like it that way. Like definitely speaking the language. But if you like know everyone in your community, I think that makes you a local. And I would just think it would take time and, um, you know, like kind of have that presence in your community that's when you become yeah. a local i don't feel like a tourist but i don't think someone else would like perceive me as a local yeah you know we true, still true, get asked true. where are you guys from and yeah. everybody else well, is obviously. like oh Ohio. <laughs> and then we say playa del carmen and they say well, just well say we're but from where us. are you from yeah, yeah but they're not going to say that to someone who actually is a local right right yeah so so <laughs> a there. little bit in between yeah. we, we know more than you know 90 percent of the the expats, I, yeah. I feel like we I feel like we have done a lot more than a lot of people that have just came in for six months and they just kind of go to coffee shops and chill on the yeah. beach and do whatever, which is totally fine. I'm just saying I think we've experienced a lot more than the average uh, immigrant or tourist even. For sure. And I feel like this is home now. You know, yeah. for now, this is home. We're comfortable here. We love it here. So, yeah, home kind of puts us towards the locals yeah. direction but if you get yeah i guess if you want to spin it in that way if the question could be perceived as does this feel like home now yeah yeah like if i'm somewhere else Aww. i say <laughs> i can't wait to get home i can't wait to get to my own yeah. bed or whatever and i'm it talking doesn't. about here not back you know at my parents house or atlanta or orlando or any other place like this is home now so yeah yeah i feel more local in that respect yeah, yeah. that's a good that's a good question we had to think about that one. very very <laughs> Uh, next one. What are your top three Mexico breweries or beers you've enjoyed since moving there? And Ooh. that is from Vanessa. Oh, good question, Vanessa. Yeah. I know my favorite is okay. uh, Principia. Yeah, I that, love that one from the start. Yeah, that's. Uh, I would say Principia is one. Uh, Morenos and yes. Pescadore. I yeah, Pescadores. Pescadores. Yeah, I don't know if I. I don't know. I enjoy them, but I feel like there's other ones uh, that I've had. Most of the beers, as we've said before, most of the beers or breweries that we like are maybe from central Mexico to west Mexico. Like I think Principia and Morenos, I feel like they're in Monterey or 
somewhere in Guadalajara. Um, they have tap rooms in Mexico City that yeah. we've been to both of them. But I love both of those because they do kind of more, and it's probably just me, but I like, you know, obviously I like IPAs, I like hazies, I like yeah. pale ales, uh, <laughs> sours, stouts, and they kind of do that. And they also do really good can art. Yeah. That's what I think art. that I I also loved about the U.S. is like the can art got really good. Yeah. Um, the parodies, all those things. It's almost as just as much fun. It's just like buying the album cover, you know, for a CD or a, a record or yeah, something. Yeah, true, true. You want the music, but you're going to pick one that has a cooler album cover than the other one. Probably. Yeah, and we have kept some of them before the cans. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say... Yeah, those top three. I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Pescadores, that's here uh, in Puerto Morelos, just north of us. Um, of course, so we yeah. love you know, Chela de Playa. We love our locals, our mm. local beers too. But I think Principia, I would say for mine. Yeah, actually, no, I like. Uh, I probably like Baja Brewing more oh, yeah. than them. And Baja they is really good. In uh, Cabo, right? Yeah, yeah, Cabo. Their brewery is impressive. Yeah, so Beautiful. yeah, there's some great ones here. But a lot of them are from other parts of Mexico. Yeah. And last question. What do you suggest? Withdrawing cash from an ATM or bringing dollars to a money exchange there? And that's from Luis. And he's one of our buddies from Panama. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey, Luis. (laughs) That's a really good question. You were just going over this with my brother when he was here. And he actually enlightened me to the fact that Panama does not have their own current. Well, they kind of have their own currency, but they use dollars like the U.S. Oh. dollar is their currency. Oh, wow. Didn't um, know that. So that's probably nice going back and forth from the U.S. To, to there for him. Yeah, that's a good trivia question. But I would <laughs> always say like people ask questions coming down. How much cash should I bring? I would bring minimal cash, maybe enough to get you through the first day. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, you know, if you're taking a bus or a taxi or something from the airport to wherever you're going, just enough to pay them and tip them or whatever. But I would always take cash out of the ATM um, and just get pesos directly. Right. Because if you bring dollars, so basically how it works is there is an exchange rate. And so let's say, okay, I'll look at it right now. So right now it is 18.01. So you're getting 18 pesos to one U.S. dollar. Right. You're never really going to ever get that. No. Because <laughs> if you go, if you bring U.S. dollars and you go to one of the exchange places, they're going to give you a specific rate. Right. It ain't going to be 18. No. Because their goal, they're a business. Their goal is to make money. money. So they might they give you 16 and a half right. or something. So you're losing about a peso and a half on every dollar that you're exchanging, which doesn't sound like much, but if you're, you know, a couple hundred dollars, yeah. it can add up to be 30, 40, 50, you know, however much, you know, you're exchanging, I guess. So it can add up to a lot. Sure. The difference is if you take it out of an ATM, first of all, you don't have to bring a bunch of fucking cash with you and worry yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> but when you take it out of ATM, many of the, the ATMs in Mexico will ask you, they have like an automatic conversion and they'll say the screen will come up before you check out and it'll say, Oh, this is how much uh, you're requesting. This is what our conversion is. Do you want to accept or decline it? Whenever people see accept or decline and they're trying to get money out, they click accept because they're like, okay, well, accept it. I got to get it. Do not accept that. Always, always, always decline it because the the ATM is doing the same thing that the exchange places are doing. They're going to give you a shittier deal. And you're going to lose money. So if you let your, if you take out, decline that, take out of the ATM with your, your ATM card, Mm -hmm. your bank is going to do the conversion for you. And the, your, even your U S bank is going to give you what their current conversion rate is for the peso, which it's not going to be exactly what it is dollar for dollar or dollar for peso, Mm -hmm. but it's going to be a lot closer like mine. Like, so 18.01, my bank might do like, 17.8 17.8 or yeah. something, you know, something very, very close. And Which it all depends close. on what your bank is. And yeah, yeah you're going to pay the, the ATM fee, but I'd rather lose four bucks in the ATM fee and get a better conversion rate. In the long run, you're going to be getting more money yeah. for, for what it's and worth. A lot of bank accounts now, they are, you know, they yeah. reimburse that. Yeah. And that's what we have. We have a, a Schwab investor account specifically for Mexico because you don't have to pay any ATM fees yeah. on either end. So they do not charge you one worldwide, and also they will reimburse you at the end of the month any foreign uh, transaction fees. Yeah. So, so that's nice. a good thing to have. But yeah, so I would say um, if you're coming down here vacation for like a week or so, yeah. bring a little ca- little USD. Yeah, just to have it. And Always places good. here will accept it. Yeah. But 
again, each restaurant has their own conversion rate. They might give you 16 pesos to the dollar and they're not going to give you probably the correct change back because they're going to give it back in pesos. Yeah. They're going to do their own conversion. So right. yeah, I feel like it's always better just bring a little USD. A little bit of cash, emergency, and then, and then get money out here. And if you are going to get money out at the ATM here, don't get it out like one of those ones on the street. Like you probably wouldn't do yeah. that. Like downtown Atlanta, you're not, or, you know, wherever you're not going to get it out on the ATM on the street. Yeah. Go to a bank, go to a grocery yeah, store, go to somewhere where sure. a little Looks more, safe. <laughs> yeah, a little more legit. Normal. Um, but yeah, that was a good question. Yep. All right. Now you ready for the Mexican slang of the day? I am. Let's do it. The Mexican slang of the day is brought to you by Inspect All Pest Services. Inspect All Pest Services provides high quality termite, pest and wildlife control. But that's not all they do. Inspect All can take care of your insulation, pressure washing, gutter maintenance and other home services in Metro Atlanta and the surrounding area. And don't forget to mention the BS now and you get 10% off. You can reach Inspect All at 770-483-2420. That's 770-483-2420. All right, the slang word of the day is way. Oh. Wait, and that is spelled, actually it's spelled G, and then there's these two little, it's a U with those two little dots, oh, little yeah. German dots. Little I didn't eyeballs. know they used those in Spanish, honestly, <laughs> other than way. And so it's G-U-E-W, but even though it looks like guay, it's almost, it's way, but there's Why? almost like a g at the very beginning, but I think people just say way. Um, and you can also, you might see it spelled W-E or W-E-Y. Okay, E-Y, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And apparently in the past, this used to, and probably is still used, is kind of a derogatory term. It's like calling someone a dumbass or an idiot. <laughs> um, but not anymore. I guess now uh, you can hear it on the radio, on TV, um, pretty much everywhere. It just kind of means like dude or buddy. Oh. Um and it's pretty common throughout Mexico, I believe. Now, oh, okay. I, don't, I don't know if it's other countries. Have you heard it here? Mm, yeah, okay. like our, um, actually, it's the Argentinian empanada place we go to. Oh, yeah. yeah that's uh, part of the name. That's Chayo what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you could see, say like, wait, donde es mi carro? Oh, like, dude, good. where's my car? <laughs> Ooh, that was good, babe. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, but, my car? So I think of it as like, not exactly this word, but like fucker. Like, yeah. you can be like, you dumb fucker. Like you yeah. can be like mad at somebody, but you can also be like, oh. get over here, fucker. You know, <laughs> your buddy, or you might call like one of your girlfriends a bitch where if oh you my. say it in a certain way, yeah, it's yeah. going to sound, you're, you're, you're calling them a bitch, <laughs> yeah. but other one you might, you might call your friend that. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just like it's saying, Hey dude, Hey bro. Hey, what's up? It's uh one of your friends. I like it. So our empanada place, our favorite, most awesome empanada place is like empanada dudes or dude empanadas. Well, it's Che Il Wei. Che is like a, it might be Che, who knows oh, how yeah. you pronounce it, but it is actually, here's another, it's an Argentina slang of the day. Ooh, this is uh, another slang word that they use in um, in Portuguese or in other parts, in Spain even, in Bra- yeah, lots of parts of Brazil, uh, but it means buddy or guy or mate. So oh, maybe it's like the connection, like guy and the guy, you know, like oh, yeah. uh, Argen- Argentina guy and Mexico guy. Oh, you know, like buddy. Like oh, like the guys. Buddy and the buddy. The, guy, the buddy and the buddies. <laughs> I know. We're probably getting this all wrong. I know. So if, uh, empanadas. if you speak Spanish, let us know. <laughs> They're the best empanadas ever. Yeah, they are great empanadas. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, so okay, well, let, let's get to know. And I feel like I've heard that that way every now and then. Yeah, that's good to know now. Listen for it. It's yep. a Good Friday tip. Yep, it is. All right. Well, Lex, you got anything before we get on out of here? If you have a pug, be careful with it around chickens. <laughs> <laughs> good advice. Good advice. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next week. Happy Friday, fuckers. Happy Friday, fuckies. Get off my lawn. It's old man Kevin, and the BS is done for right now. Please share, like, and support. Podcastthebs.com Now, get out of here.